Welcome to season four of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Newsel, and this season, we'll dive into something we are all familiar with, fatigue. What is it? Why does it happen? Most importantly, how can we fix it outside of this? Coffee. Also, you can enjoy the video version of this podcast on YouTube. The channel is at To Health With That. Can't wait to see you there. This week, let's talk about sleep and MTHFR. So MTHFR gives us a number of tendencies that can interfere with sleep or that have the potential to disrupt sleep. And that's not just MTHFR, it's actually any methylation imbalance. So with or without the mutation, if your methylation is a bit off, then you can see some sleep problems. Some of the things that can contribute to sleep problems with MTHFR include anxiety, perfectionism, the tendency to over-obsess about the things that we find important or that we're dedicated to, high sensitivity, addictive tendencies, overt mental health issues, and that sort of thing. Physical issues that come along with MTHFR can interfere with sleep as well, including thyroid disorders, inflammatory disorders and pain syndromes, blood sugar imbalance. And it isn't that all of us have all of these things, thank goodness. It's that all of us have the potential to have these things. Let's talk about some of the biggest factors. The big issue with MTHFR comes down to poor activation of folate, which in turn leads to problems with methylation. And that's where the crux of our issues come in. So it's not actually folate, really. It's methylation. To manage the MTHFR mutation, you need both the right amount and the right form of folate for you, but also you need the right amount of methyl donors. This is super variable from person to person. And the worst part is that doses that are too low interfere with sleep and doses that are too high also interfere with sleep. The best way to find your perfect dose is to make sure you're changing only one thing at a time and also that you're tracking your symptoms, including sleep quality and energy every day while you're finding your perfect dose. Also, be aware that your dosages will change over time. You won't be at the same dose for your entire life. So it's really important to watch yourself, watch your body, and be aware when new symptoms come in or when old symptoms return that something might need an adjustment. It sounds like a pain to keep track of your symptoms, but it will save you months or even years of heartache in terms of finding the right path forward for you. If you haven't done so already, if you sign up for the mailing list at tohealthwiththat.com, there is a free symptom tracker that you can download to help you on this journey. With MTHFR, Sleep can suffer also if you have significant amounts of synthetic folic acid in your diet or supplements or prescription drugs. So getting that out of your life really matters. Many people that I've worked with report better energy and better sleep just from that one step. I'm not going to tell you it's easy to get folic acid out of your diet, but even though it's difficult, it's even more difficult to make good progress with MTHFR without completing this step. Folate, however, is not the only dietary factor that matters for sleep. Blood sugars actually matter possibly even more. Not just the blood sugar routine testing that you do at your doctor's office, but also how much your blood sugar is swinging and fluctuating during the day, even if your numbers are technically normal. We've talked a lot about blood sugar issues before, so I won't belabor a point, but if you're looking for more info information, I suggest you look at the series of Tuesday Tip videos on YouTube that I posted about it. Also, let's talk about the smaller things that you can do with MTHFR once you've got your dose of methylfolate or whatever folate you're able to take and methyl donors nailed. So, of course, sleep hygiene is a big topic and there's a million and a half resources about it. But here are some of the factors that are most important for MTHFR folks, in my opinion, for the bedtime routine with MTHFR. One is definitely low light before bed. So one to two hours. And that's especially important if you also have a slow COMT mutation, which can make you much more sensitive to the stimulation that light provides. Low light also includes keeping screens out of your life 
for this one to two hours. I know that's hard too, <laughs> but so very worth it. Melatonin. So melatonin is your body's main sleep hormone, and it's also serotonin that's been methylated. So with MTHFR, A, we may not make very much serotonin, and B, we may not methylate it very well. So melatonin can be a really, really big deal for MTHFR because we may just not have enough to go around. A balanced evening meal. So when you look down at your plate, I want you to see half vegetables, a quarter, some sort of starchy vegetable or complex carb, and a quarter, some sort of a protein source. That is a nice balanced meal. If there's something sweet in there, make sure you have it at the end of the meal and kind of add that to your complex carbs pile so that you're not overdoing it on the carbs. This type of meal will help to keep your blood sugar steady overnight. So don't mess it up by reaching for the snacks after dinner. A wind down activity. So it could be a gentle yoga session, a meditation, a breathing exercise, coloring in a coloring book, journaling, whatever helps you kind of untangle your mind and have a moment of calm before sleep. And it really can be a moment, right? Like a one minute breathing exercise. We're good. To-do list and an idea pad. So we tend to be overthinkers and maybe <clears throat> a little bit obsessive. So it helps to have a notepad or your journal or whatever you use to record ideas by your bed so that if inspiration strikes in the middle of the night or the thing you forgot to do in a day or the to-do list or whatever it is, you can jot it down so that it's not in your brain. You can forget about it and move on. The other thing that I think is really important is magnesium at bedtime. So technically, this has nothing to do with MTHFR, although it is extremely helpful if you have a slow COMT because magnesium is a cofactor for that enzyme. But in the Western world, we tend to be magnesium deficient just as a baseline because our diets don't have as much magnesium as they historically did. So if your mind and body feel restless or won't shut down, magnesium is excellent. Now, also, there's some things you can do in the morning to help your sleep. One is bright light. So just like we want low light in the night to help stimulate sleep hormones and shut down those wake-up hormones, we want bright light, especially full-spectrum light, in the morning to get everything going. Now, if you're an Andrew Huberman fan, this could be the go outside and see the sunshine. If you don't have sunshine available to you first thing in the morning when you wake up, a full spectrum light, like a happy light or something like that for 15 minutes will really, really help. Also, a savory breakfast. So instead of reaching for the starchy carby breakfast like we tend to do in North America, reach for something savory, right? Like go for the eggs, go for some leftovers, go for something that's going to actually give you the protein and not the carbs to get that day started right and keep your blood sugar balanced for the day. There are also some bonus things to include for good sleep with MTHFR, and these can be any time of day. A good exercise session. People with MTHFR get extra benefit from exercise, I believe, especially if you tend towards restless energy. This is, of course, partly because of the literally hundreds of health benefits of exercise. Like, it's just good for you. But also... Exercise helps your body process extra methyl groups. And so if you're feeling scattered or restless or a little bit off focus or easily distracted, exercise can be the thing to get some of those methyl groups out of there to help you settle down. Also, B vitamins and methyl groups in the morning only, right? They do tend to give us energy, give us pep, sometimes give us restlessness. And so if you're taking B vitamins and methyl groups, make sure you're taking them in the morning, as far away from your sleep time as possible. Also, B vitamins, especially with food, because they can make your stomach a little bit upset. So, of course, every MTHFR person is different, but this is a good place to start if you have both MTHFR and sleep issues. Thanks for being here. See you next week.